It just seems like when you're a child, winter lasts forever, but then there's this wonderful Christmas in the middle of it. Well, here we are at the Red Lion Inn, and it's on the main street in Stockbridge, Massachusetts. And this inn is on the corner, and it opened in 1773. When I started to think about illustrating this book, I thought, what would be a beautiful town that would look wonderful with the snow? And of course, Stockbridge has the most beautiful main street, I think, in New England. It's just perfect. And I thought that would be the place to set the book. But it was a little bit challenging because Norman Rockwell lived in this town for years, he used a lot of the residents as characters in his, his wonderful paintings. And the Norman Rockwell Museum is here this beautiful little town. It's part of the American memory. So I thought that I could kind of tip my hat to him, but when I was doing it, I always felt a little bit nervous about, you know, who does she think she is drawing this beautiful little town that Norman Rock Rockwell has immortalized. But then I thought, it's just too beautiful to pass up. I would walk through the town and look at different buildings and say this is where the reindeer could land and if I were looking out the window this is what I'd see. And there's a building down the street, it's called the Seven Arts Building and it's this Victorian building and it was just perfect for where the family would live and I could just picture the reindeer landing on the roof. Of course it was a pointed roof so I had to cut it off and make a little landing pad for the reindeer. <laughs> but that's why you have an artistic license. <laughs> well, what inspired me is really the music and the poem itself. The poem is, I don't know, I get goosebumps from it. There's something really, it's almost like magic is happening. It was the night before Christmas, when all through the house, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. It just evokes this feeling that you have when you're a little child of wonder. There might be a full moon and the snow, and you think, you know, it really is Christmas. And I think that's more my inspiration. I mean, I had photographs of the town, and I love snow. So it was just very easy to put those together. But there's a line in it that always stopped me, which is, nothing was stirring, not even a mouse. So that means, what do you draw? Everything is not stirring. But luckily it said inside the house. So one night I just woke up out of a sleep and said, outside the house. There could be something going on outside of the house. And that's when I thought, well, maybe Santa comes and he has two stowaway elves. And then as he's down filling the stockings with presents, then of course the little elves are mischievous and they've been cramped up in the sleigh hiding and now it's time to play with all those presents while Santa is busy. And of course they make this giant mess and then it's all of a sudden that moment of what have we done? And then they forget Santa's magical. He can just put his finger by the side of his nose and then everything is put back into the sleigh onto the next house. But they're pretty nervous about that. When he's gonna come back, what will he do? <laughs> but he's Santa Claus. So. I didn't have to worry. <laughs> it was a special holiday because we were all together as a family. My sister Sophie is 15 months younger than I am, so we would of course be, you know, up looking out the window every two seconds waiting for the reindeer to come. And we had the cookies that would leave for the reindeer. And it was just a really joyful time. Well, I have always wanted to be a children's book illustrator since kindergarten. So I never thought I would be doing the writing part, but when I was out there with my portfolio, then the publisher would always say, or art director, you need to write your own story. You'll have a much better chance of being published. So I was always a great storyteller, but not writer per se. So I had to kind of dig deep and start writing my own stories. And that kind of came naturally, but it takes a year to do each book. So it's like every year of my life is devoted to some 
particular story. So I have to really love it. You know, I'll have hundreds of choices to make and then it will get narrowed down. And some of them will be sitting on the back burner just waiting for that last piece of puzzle to get in there to make it be a story. And I have to be thinking about a border idea because that pretty much is the way I tell a story. It just gives you another a sense of what else could be happening at that time. You know, if you can't fit it in the center of the page, then there's always the borders, and I can put maybe an animal there, or in this case, the little elves. You get an inside of the house and the outside of the house. And so you can see the little elves being mischievous in the borders. My husband's in the Boston Symphony, and of course, when I hear the pops, I'm always looking for my husband, Joe, who's a double bass player. And I always like to sit where I can see where he, I can see his bowings and the way his hands are fingering the strings because, I don't know, he's handsome. <laughs> I like to look at him play. You're like the, the guard chicken. He's a really cool bird. Well, after, you know, I've been raising these chickens. Well, I did when I was a little girl, I had chickens. <laughs> So ever since then, I've liked chickens, and then I started raising them, and I like them even more now. They just make me laugh. So I have um, a lot of my Polish chickens, which is an exhibition breed, and I show them. So I will breed maybe 50 chicks, and they have to grow up to be an adult size, so that would be seven months. So I really enjoy it. We travel all over the country going to chicken shows, and every year, there's this new batch of babies, and the way I keep track of which year, how old they are, is I name them after whatever book I'm working on. Every year, I'll just know from whatever name it is what year they were hatched because of that book, that I because one book a year. It takes me a long time to do a book. It takes me an hour just to do an inch. So I start out usually around after Christmas doing the um, manuscript. Then it goes to the book dummy, which is a cartoon version. It takes maybe a couple of weeks. That's what the stage I'm at right now with the turtle book. And then I'll do the finishes, which takes the longest, maybe a week and a half for each one. And then I take some time off in the fall to go on the book tour. And I, it's just, that's just like the frosting on the cake, because I get to meet children that bring me their drawings to show me. And sometimes they'll even bring their pet hedgehog or their pet rabbit or their pet um, chicken a couple of times to the book signing, it's great fun. Now this book is populated by owls, so I had to use my imagination. You know, I've gone back and forth. Sometimes I've had a character that I've taken pictures of and they've almost gone through a movie script and acted it out. And then I work very closely with my editor, Margaret, and she kind of likes it when I use my imagination more and so that I'm not using an exact photograph and then rendering it my own artistic thoughts get in there, and I think that's probably the best solution to it rather than using actual photographs. And surprisingly, I like to think of sounds and smells when I'm painting, and of course, you can't have them in a picture book, but I just imagine them anyway, and somehow I think that comes through a little bit. This is the book dummy for the night before Christmas, the Main Street in Stockbridge. We had to travel out there when it was covered with snow, which was great fun. And I start out with a manuscript, and then I cut it up according to how, picture book is always 32 pages. And I'll maybe replace something. I'll change the borders according to, you know, trying out ideas. And this is done in watercolors, but it's more of a cartoony style. The children love to see this because they can really relate to what do you do when you make a mistake or change your mind? And they can see that I've pasted over in some places. And um, you know, you can see the text has been changed here. So I love doing the dummy. That's where a lot of the creativity happens. It's Santa. Children's book is almost like poetry in that every word counts. And so you want to pare down. And anything I can show in the pictures, I won't need words for. So that's why it's the, kind of the marriage between the illustrations and the words, which is what I love the best about books, about illustrating children's books. 
Sometimes the art instructs you. It's like a discovery process. And you find out things about yourself that you don't even know until you draw. And I think that's the same for dancers and actors and public speakers, that, that you almost have this persona inside yourself that you don't know is there until you express it in some art form. The spirit of Christmas, I guess everybody wants to be nice to others and be with family at Christmas. And we have kids that are in the Marines and it's really hard when they're gone at Christmas time and you think of them over there and they get a nice dinner and sometimes there'll be an entertainer that will be going over there. But it's not the same as having them home. So whenever I think of home for Christmas, I think of all the families that have so much love for their children or sister and brother, and they're not there. So I think you just need to celebrate when you are together. And that's what Christmas means to me, is being home with our, with our family and the grandchildren. And you know that, that's it. I mean, there's the cooking and there's the decorating and stuff, but nothing takes the place of that family time. <laughs>